initiative in Somalia, AMISOM's mandate in Somalia ends at the close of this month, but the UN Security Council could extend it. It is expected that the mission will transition into a UN peacekeeping mission. KDF troops continue to provide medical and humanitarian assistance to Somalis in liberated areas. We are doing a second borehole in Somalia to help the local people there. We just finished one in Badande and you have moved on to Galile. Meanwhile, in the port city of Kismayu, the security situation is getting better by the day. KDF Army some commanders and the Somali National Army have held several meetings with members of the business community in Kismayu who want to have the seaport and airport reopened immediately. And from Somalia capital Mogadishu, Amisom spokesman Colonel Ali Aden has urged all Archibald fighters in other parts of Somalia where Amisom troops are enforcing peace to stop fighting and surrender. Patrick Amimo, KTN Prime. Mombasa Republican Council Secretary General Hamza Randu has been arrested for incitement. Hamza was arrested in Mombasa town a day after MRC's Mohammed Rashid Muraja was arrested and charged with incitement. There are also reports that the police are closing in on Omar Momnadazi at Ngombeni Kwale. Three other suspected MRC members, Bakari Mohammed, Jilo Mohammed, Omar Yusa and Simba Omar are currently being detained at Malindi Police Station awaiting trial on Wednesday. Sources say a special squad has been deployed to Kuala Kilifi and Kisauni, known to be MRC strongholds. The panel of eminent persons that played a big role in ending the post-election violence says it will not leave anything to chance in ensuring that all mechanisms that will allow for a free and fair general election are put in place. Chair of the panel, former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, is in the country with other members of the group meeting with different election stakeholders. He was instrumental in bringing back sanity to the country after the 2007-2008 post-election violence. And just to make sure things are in order before the next general election, Kofi Annan and the panel of eminent persons are in the country. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan is in the country on a mission by the panel of eminent persons to see to it that various players in the coming general election are up to speed with their various mandates to ensure a peaceful, free and fair election. Accompanied by former Tanzanian President Benjamin Mkapa, Annan says the panel is still keeping an eye on Kenya as election approaches. Our presence here indicates that we have not disengaged and we are going to do whatever we can to support the people of Kenya uh, during this critical uh, period. I don't think any one of us would want to see what happened five years ago repeated and we intend to be here working with you as we move towards the elections in March. <laughs> si society civil society wengi wao wamesema wanataka tuendelee kuwa interested na kusikiliza na kutoa ushauri pale tunapoombwa the two leaders were addressing the media after holding a closed door meeting with chief justice willy mutunga to assess judicial reforms the country has taken and the preparedness of the judiciary to handle election related conflicts independence and the integrity of the new judiciary has given hope to the people and, they, and, and it has also restored their respect for the rule of law and faith in the rule of law. If you take the issue of elections, there are certain amendments that have to be made uh, um, so that these elections are effectively conducted. And I think the IABC and others, the CIC and others have also noted what needs to be amended. Later, Anan and Mukapa held talks with Prime Minister Raila Odinga at the PM's office with talks centering on the country's election preparedness. The two also met with independent electoral and boundaries commission officials and members of the Constitutional Implementation Commission, Aaron Ochenke, ATN Prime. Agenda 4 was meant to deal with the weightiest challenges Kenya has faced in a bid to deal with the underbelly of discontent that led to the 2007 post-election violence. But five months to an election has Kenya made significant strides in ensuring we do not return to the violence. Anki Guta reports. 
Agenda item 4 under the National Dialogue and Reconciliation Talks was meant to address the long-term issues that Kenya was facing in a bid to ensure the likelihood of political violence in future was brought down to minimal levels. The issues included constitutional, legal and institutional reforms as well as fighting poverty and inequality, youth unemployment and instituting land reforms. So how has Kenya fared so far? Reforms expert Karuti Kanyingi says Kenya has done fairly well. In a statement to KTN, Kanyingi said Kenya has achieved most of the key elements under Agenda 4, which include a new constitution and judicial reforms. He points out that the constitution provides an opportunity to address other issues that caused inequality in the country, such as underdevelopment of some areas and a lack of an inclusive government, which has now been addressed by devolution. The judiciary has also been hailed as one of the most transformed institutions in today's Kenya, one that has stood up to the executive and parliament in recent times. But Kanyingi points out the emerging threat, that of disobeying court orders in order to sabotage the institution. Parliament remains in the spotlight as one of the most disappointing institutions. While it boasts passing new laws to operationalize the constitution, many key pieces of legislation such as the Leadership and Integrity Bill have been watered down. Kanyingi observes that this has been occasioned by vested interests in Parliament and that it is these interests that are undermining the fundamental principles Kenyans stood for by voting for the new constitution. Land reforms in Kenya remain unimpressive. While there have been efforts to undertake land reforms, they are stuck at the blueprint stage. Odenda Lumumba, the national coordinator for the Kenya Land Alliance, says there appears to be a lack of spirit to implement reforms. Despite the approval of a national land policy, he laments little more has been done. Urgent attention must be paid to legislating community land law, in the absence of which Kenya may witness violent confrontations to resolve the issue. IDPs are yet to be resettled, compounding the land issues as we head to the elections. Other than institutional reform, Agenda 4 sought to deal with youth unemployment. The Annan team had targeted an average of 740,000 new jobs to be created each year from 2008 to 2012. Figures from the National Bureau of Statistics indicate that we have managed a little more than half of the target annually, with only 1.6 million new jobs being created since 2007. And while scandals like those which marred the Kazikwa Vijana initiative cannot be ignored, analysts say the economy has not recovered sufficiently to bolster jobs growth. Anne Kiguta, KTN. Alright, a quick reminder what we are asking you today, instead of our usual big questions, today we are asking you to send in your views on uh, the 2 billion shilling send off that MPs have proposed to be given at the end of their terms. Send in your comments, many of you have been sending them in. You want to look at what Michael? Yeah, uh, Monica from Nairobi says, they are greedy and selfish. They only care about themselves but not about the country. I urge all Kenyans not to vote any member who is in the current government. Uh, it's you and I who can change the force. Yeah, and no. they say vote wisely. Okay, another name to, actually in the same breath uh, says, please read this. Kenyans should stop crying because uh, it's of course their fault. They complain about them now and next year recycle the same uh, bigotry. They write the letter to proof of this is the opinion polls, Raila Uhuru and others, not even a new face. I urge us to vote purely new leaders. Let us wipe out all the scam in our know, new parliament. Last we write the same letter again. Vote new leaders. Stop recycling poor leaders. I'll be watching KTN Prime and just ahead why a family in Kalifi exhumed the body of a relative. Stay with us. The 10th edition of the Standard Chartered Nairobi Marathon takes place on the 28th of October. Get yourself ready by engaging in daily exercises. The top reasons to exercise include reduces medical and healthcare expenses, gives you more energy to meet the demands of daily life, increases your level of muscle endurance, helps you sleep easier and better. 
prepare yourself to run for a reason. Register now at Old Standard Chartered Bank branches, Nakmat Supermarkets, and online on www.nairobimarathon.com. Registration closes on Sunday, 21st October 2012. Run for a reason. Timiza na M-Pesa. We number CDs. E200. To enter, simply use Nunuwa na M-Pesa, Playbill, or even do your banking through M-Pesa. There will also be 20 daily cash winners of 25,000 shillings and 25 winners weekly of up to 5,000 shillings. Relax. Ukona M-Pesa. In this 21st century, we are still losing lives through unhealthy alcoholic drinks. Children are left orphaned and families left broken. This shouldn't happen. A healthy drink means a healthy family and a healthy working nation. This message is brought to you by Vienna Ice Ready to Drink Vodka. Mixed to precision. We care. Everybody loves bread, but only the very finest bread can love you back. So soft to touch and so tasty. How much money do you pay to send money on your network? Do you pay more to send more money? Jay Unagongwa. Welcome to Airtel Money. Here you can send money to any network at an all-time low rate of zero. That's right, send money for free, regardless of amount or network. To see Gongwe Tenor, dial star 222 hash to find your nearest Airtel Money agent and enjoy money transfer the Airtel way. Airtel Money. Pesa Mkononi. African dishes in association with Golden Fry. Pan-fried fish. Ingredients. One kilogram fish fillet. One cup all-purpose flour. Salt and pepper to taste. Lemon wedges. Golden Fry oil for frying. Directions. In a deep frying pan, pour about an inch of Golden Fry oil and heat it. Slice the fish into thin pieces not too thin. In a mixing bowl, mix the all-purpose flour, salt and pepper. Coat evenly the fish fillet pieces in the flour mixture. Fry the fish a piece or two at a time, depending on the size of your pan, for four to five minutes on each side or until golden brown. Remove and drain on a paper towel. Serve with tartar sauce and lemon wedges. Golden Fry. Fries more, lasts longer. Stand by for code word. Code word is imminent. Bond. James Bond.
Welcome back. A family in Kilifi has had to exhume the body of a relative uh, following claims that the spirit of the deceased is allegedly tormenting the village. The family says the man was buried contrary to his will and now a fresh burial will have to be done. KTN's Angel Katusia reports. Song and dance in a small village in Kilifi. There is no much to celebrate about, however. This family is doing the will of the relative who passed on and was buried in April 2011. A few days ago, they exhumed his body from the grave where he was laid to rest. They claim the dead man's spirit has been tormenting them. Family members claim they buried him in a formal Christian burial ceremony, yet his will was he be buried traditionally. They claim failure to fulfill his will is the reason the spirit has not left the family. Family members also claim they have been having sleepless nights and many times they experience nightmares. The late man's will was to be buried in traditional attire and traditional songs performed during his burial, something they failed to observe when they sang gospel songs and dressed his body in a suit before burying him. Elders in the village agreed his body must be exhumed and reburied as per the late man's wish. <laughs> The family will bury his remains again after five days, observing all his wishes. According to them, only this will stop the spirit from interfering with the living. For KTN Prime, I'm Angel Katusia. Three people have been arrested by officers from the anti-counterfeit agency for allegedly being in custody of a large number of counterfeit printer toners in Nairobi's industrial area. The recovered goods are said to be worth more than 100 million shillings. Here are the details. The stockpiles of computer toners were recovered by officers from the anti-counterfeit agency at Nairobi's industrial area. Three people, a man and a woman of Chinese origin, as well as a Kenyan woman, were arrested during the swoop. According to the chief executive officer of the anti-counterfeit agency, they set up a trap which the suspects fell for. Our officers uh, managed to get information about this, uh, the, this operation, these counterfeiters, and organized for... Uh, somebody to make uh, a purchase to organize to buy a large uh, a large volume uh, of toners and it was the basis of that operation that uh, uh, when the goods were being delivered that uh, the suspects were apprehended and they led us back to this uh, particular house the value of counterfeit goods recovered was reported to be worth over 100 million shillings. The anti-counterfeit officers believe a larger syndicate is behind the entry and sale of the counterfeit goods. As minutes after the arrest, a number of interested parties turned up, including lawyers for the suspects. The officers say today's operation was a significant step in the war against counterfeit goods, urging Kenyans to report any suspicious activities to the authorities. to build a balanced, healthy society. Security, development, and rule of law, and respect for human rights. But perhaps the third pillar is the most important, the rule of law and respect for human rights. And if you don't have everything rooted in that, you may be building on sand. Kwa miezi sita, kipindi kipya cha Sema Kenya, kitatembelea kila pembe ya nchi ili kukupa nafasi ya kuwahoji viongozi wako. Kosa moja aliachichimuke. Lakini huyu mke amekuwa na makosa mengi wanaposema. Tangulo <laughs> langu ni hizi kwa upande wa polisi. Usalama na vijana na ajira. Sulu sulu huli kwa wapi? Na hao ndio wenye kuchoma, hao ndio wenye kuimbia, wenye kupiga kura, au umewaweka wapi? Sema Kenya Kila jumapili kuanzia saa 12 jioni kwenye KTN. 
We see and explore opportunities where others see impossibilities. I've been able to reduce the energy cost by around 19%. In Musa Nyanya, the only show of its kind that brings together the East African business community and equips both the small and medium scale entrepreneurs with the best business practices. Matopoa is a gel and a stove, uh, mainly used with ethanol. In this environment where unemployment is high, it is one way of creating employment for themselves. We take you to Uganda, where a farmer is adding value to pineapples by developing a new product that has a longer shelf life. Business Focus, every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. only on KTN. Restore electrolytes lost in sweat. You need an isotonic body fuel to take you faster, stronger, for longer. Glucose 8 Sport. Hydrate, fuel, restore, faster, stronger, for longer. From downtown to up country, from hard at work to hard at work. The NP300 Hardbody boasts a tough engine and uncomplicated design. With the TD27 2.7 liter diesel engine, the NP300 has a host of performance and design upgrades as well as has been proven to be tough, reliable and durable workhorse in its class. The MP300 Hitchoki is the ideal business choice and offers exceptional return on investment. So, whether you're self-employed, a sole trader typically working in remote locations, or construction sites, or whether you do landscaping projects or agriculture, the MP300 Hard Body is the pickup for you. Nani Kamanisa She's got a cold again. Well, I'm sure you're taking proper care of your hygiene. Yes, I use antiseptic liquid in the bath water. But germs are also getting smarter, and your protection is still the same. So what's better? Advanced Life Pro. While bathing, it gives better germ protection than antiseptic liquid. Ten infection causing germs. One advanced protection. Life Boy. KTN Business Today. Brought to you by Britam. We are with you every step of the way. Welcome to KTN Business Today. Safaricom's dominance in the Kenya mobile phone industry continues to decline. In the latest Communications Commission of Kenya, the firm saw a 1% drop on its grip of the market as other players recorded improvements. The statistics also show that nearly 30 million Kenyans now have access to mobile phone services. Philip Keitani has more to the story. With competition becoming stiff in the mobile money market, the four players have been trying to outplay each other. It is as a result of this as Safaricom, though still holding the top of the food chain, has seen its market share drop. According to the quarterly data from the regulator, Safaricom market share dropped marginally from 65.3%, recorded previously, to 64%. Similarly, Telecom Kenya recorded a 10.5% with Airtel, an essay popular known as U-Mobile, jumping up to 16.5% and 9% respectively at the end of the quarter. The gain in the Airtel's and SA market share, the regulator said, was attributed to various innovation and competitive tariffs, special offers and promotions offered by the two operators during the quarter. Individually, Airtel recorded the largest gain in new subscriptions of 400,000, followed by SA with slightly 100,000 new subscriptions. Telcom Kenya gained some 23,000 new subscribers, while Safaricom saw over 67,000 subscribers hanging up on it in the quarter under review. 
at close to 30 million of the approximated 42 million Kenyan accessing mobile phone in the country. The penetration now stands at 75.4 per 100 inhabitants, up from 74 per 100 inhabitants recorded the previous quarter. This represents a quarterly mobile penetration increase of 1.4 percent and an annual increase of 11.2 percent. Philip, K time for KTN Business Today. The frequency of the Kenya's coffee auctions at the Nairobi Coffee Exchange has been reduced from weekly auctions to every two weeks due to dwindling stocks levels. The volume of crop offered for sale at the Nairobi Coffee Exchange has dropped to average 10,000 to 20,000 bags per auction against an optimal 30,000 bags. At last week's sale, only 10,851 bags of coffee were offered for sale. Supplies are often low at the start of Kenya's coffee season of October to September. September, but pick up as the season progresses in line with the harvest cycle. The industry has, however, focused that coffee export earnings will raise a 5 to 10 percent in the 2011 2012 season, helped by improved international prices. Kenya earned around 26 billion shillings from exports of the commodity in 2010 2011, up from 16 billion a year earlier, statistics by the industry regulator Coffee Board of Kenya showed. The race for the right talent in an organization is heating up with companies going all out to ensure they have the best talent. There is, however, the emergence of mobile employees ready to change jobs as they feel their current organization does not suit them, forcing employers to fork out more to try and hold on to them. But according to Deloitte's Best Company to Work for a survey, even as Kenyan employers break a bank to acquire the retained uh, talent, a lack of proper uh, talent retention strategies could work against their growth strategies. Michael Karanja has more. A number of shoot business leaders are tailoring their talent programs to address differing regional and demographic needs to support effective talent strategies and business operations. But despite this fact, a survey carried out by audit firm Deloitte dubbed the best company to work for in Kenya, a number of organizations still don't have an accurate representation of the divergences between the attitudes and desires of their employees and the talent strategies and practices that they have adopted. This misalignment in ideology has seen many employees test the job market in the country, changing jobs every two to three years. We've certainly seen with those organizations who are a lot more astute around this issue, they're investing a lot of time and effort in, in engaging with those people, conducting what we refer to as stay interviews, so validating whether they're still happy being with the organization, whether they're plan, planning to continue with their careers in that organization. This has in turn created a situation where critical talent for an organization is in high demand, with employers forced to pay more to attract and retain such employees. However, such rising levels of workforce disengagement, combined with increasing turnover intentions, may in fact impact companies along the business entities that they are relying on to drive growth. There is a toleration threshold, I think, from both employers on the one hand and the market on the other, because it's also about the message you send into the business. If you prepare to pay, just listening to the example quoted earlier, an employee that has left your organization to bring them back in a year or two's time at a 50 to 100 percent increase in the pay that they would have left on, what is the message that's sent to the peers of that individual? Um, that can have a very demotivating effect as well. So in many instances, it's a short-term decision without appreciating the full consequences that's behind that. Of the 16 firms that participated in the survey with 5,000 respondents, East African Breweries emerged as the best company to work for in Kenya. It was followed by the Kenya Women's Finance Trust and National Media Group in second and third place respectively. Michael Karanja, KTN Business Today. And now look at some of the corporate news that also made headlines today. Local manufacturing firm Ken African Industries has commissioned a 1 billion shilling confectionery chiclet machine that will see the company increase its production capacity. The new confectionery machine will, among other things, ensure consistency in color, size, and shape of the chiclets it produces, ensuring that the product is exactly the same at the point of purchase throughout the year. <laughs> Elsewhere, AAR Health Services Kenya, a business arm under the AAR Holdings, has launched a fully-fledged insurance company operating as AAR Insurance Kenya Limited. The insurance company will provide a wide variety of products and services including medical, work injury benefits act, domestic packages, personal accident and professional dentist for doctors. 
And finally, let's have a look at the financial market report. Today was brought to you by Britam. We are with you every step of the way. Kenya is a third world country which has embraced tourism as an important strategy for social economic development. But much as travel, tourism, and hospitality are quite lucrative for the economy of Kenya and the world at large. Within it, there is a serious problem related to the youth in these coastal and related regions. This is the drug problem. On Saturday, 25th August 2012, a new and very significant effort was made at Mamba Village in Mombasa County, and it caught the hearts of those parents and youths who are at risk, gifted or talented. A gifted person, when you teach something today, they see it in a hundred other ways and a hundred years to come. Kila pasta na ibanga, kweni ni marangapi pasta mengia kwa kanisa na akasema wapendo ni ingependa kuwebia siri ya kuingia binguni. What is this? Watcha! Watcha! It's the biggest, craziest comedy show on TV. My deputy principal was a very funny character. The first day he saw me, he looked at me and said, Kijana, you look like a good boy because good things come in small packages. <laughs> It's all about big laughter. It's now time to look on what's making headlines in the world of sports. I'm Nicholas Mudimba. The Kenyan prison volleyball team leaves the country on Thursday for Doha for the World Championships where they will seek to improve from their 20 team debacle. The team hopes to start by winning match sets before winning games. The volleyball league defending champions have been making baby steps towards their continental glory. And feel after two years' experience, they are ready to take on the world's best in Doha. Prisons finished fifth last year and came back to the country with a bag full of lessons. We've been improving every other year, and our, our time is near. Our time is near that we are going to perform better. And I, I'm seeing as if this is going to be a turnaround. We want to start from this time. And the moment the African team wins a match at the World, World Cup, it will be a big turnaround. We are going to win and win and win. They have had to change their training regime to cope with the rigorous World Championships program. And even as the technical bench tries to gel the young and experienced players in their effort to rebuild the squad for continuity, pressure is not one of the things in the coach's mind. The players are prepared well, they are psyched, they are motivated. We want to make a change. They want to be part of the history of that, that's going to make a change in Africa. The opening match against Turkey's Fenerbahce will give the team a clear indication of their ambition in the championships. We know beating Fenerbahce is a tall order, but uh, if we win this first match, then we are going to enhance our chances of advancing to the second round, which is the semi-finals. The team is expected to jet out of the country on Thursday for the week-long championship that begins on the 13th of October to the 19th. League defending champions, prisons will be jetting out to Qatar with one thing in mind, to prove that they are not pushovers in continental championships. Reporting for KTN from the Moy Sports Center, Kasarani Gymnasium, Mamhassan Juma. 
We will now the FKF Cup semi-finals matches beating Gormahai and FC Lepers in Sofapaka against Task FC have now been postponed to a little date to give a room for a friendly match between Harambe Stars and the Bufana Bufana of South Africa. The matches ready for the weekend of 12th and 13th of October have now been put off to give Harambe Stars coach Henry Michel time to organize his side for a crucial friendly against the Bufana Bufana of South Africa on 16th of October at the Nyaya National Stadium. Arabi Stars currently in camp expected to wind up the training for this match with players from the full Premier League side this weekend before coach Henry Michel unveils his first team on Monday next week. Prolific striker John Barraza says he's just warming up for more goals despite having 17 goals. And moving on to matters still soccer in the country, the Kenya 7th team will have uh, a final arrived in Australia this morning after a two-day flight for the first leg of the 2011-2012 Arab season. Coach Mike Farid had told Kitin that they arrived safely even after delays during their departure. Twelve players and five officials will be expected to start the training program early in the morning. Coach Friday added that they will try the level base in the rigorous training for the remaining three days and acclimatize well before the first big match against former coach Mike Friday charges. <laughs> You must have found when you're passing yourself and someone's communicating to you the whole time. <laughs> Moving on, prolific striker John Baraza says he's just warming up with the more goals despite having 17 goals to his name this year. The Sofapaka talisman has spoken out his focus for the season, which may just see his tally surpass the golden mark of 20 goals with only four matches remaining. John Baraza debuted in the Tasca Premier League in the year 2000 at a time when playing locally didn't pay well. Balaza did not relent as soccer was the only sport he was familiar with and has over the years remained consistent as a centre forward receiving numerous call-ups into the national team Harambe's 